Hello everybody. This is the first lecture on series of lectures on dental caries. As we begin from the beginning, we will start by defining the caries and their understanding different caries classifications. In part one, we will talk about classifications based on origin, location, rate, extent, age and tooth surfaces. In part two, we will talk about GV plaque classification, WHO and mouse classification. So let's go ahead. I hope you enjoy your lecture. As we classify caries, we improve our knowledge about different caries lesions that occur on the teeth. The first type of classification is based on whether it's an original or recurrent caries lesion. And we classify it as primary caries and secondary caries. Now based on the location of the caries lesion, that is where it is present. It can be pit and fissure caries, smooth surface caries, or root caries. Then based on the extent of the caries lesion, it can be an inisimpit caries or initial caries or it can be advanced caries that is cavitated lesion. Then based on the rate of progression of caries, how quickly it is progressing, it is acute caries and chronic caries. Now based on the pathway of spread of caries, how it is spreading, it is can be backward caries or forward caries. Then based on the extent of removal of caries lesion during treatment, we have just one aspect that is residual caries. Then based on the number of involved tooth surfaces, it is simple caries, compound caries or complex caries. Then based on the age of the patient, it can be nursing bottle caries, adolescent caries or senile caries. Then an independent classification comes as radiation caries. Then we come to GV black classification. Now black, you know, is, was the father of dentistry. He classified caries into six classes, one to six. Now we'll be doing that in the next video. WHO also classified caries. That classification also we'll discuss. Then mount, he classified caries on the basis of site and size of the lesion. That will be done right in the end, that is in the second video. Now we, in detail, we will do the first eight classifications. Now right from the very beginning, what is the definition of caries? Caries is defined as an infectious microbiological disease that results in the localized dissolution and destruction of calcified tissues of the teeth. What does this mean? That means it is infectious, the disease. It is caused by microbes, so it's microbiological. And what does it do? It causes dissolution. It dissolves the tissues where locally, that means where it is present. And it destroys the calcified tissues of the teeth. So this is caries. Now this caries attack is episodic. Episodic means, that means it comes and it goes with alternating phases of demineralization and remineralization. That means first there's a stage of demineralization. That means we lose the minerals. That is you can set destruction of calcified tissue. After that the caries attack it subsides slightly and there is tendency of remineralization by taking minerals from the saliva. So we first it was primary caries. That was based on the origin of the caries. So what is primary caries? It is the original caries lesion of the tooth. It can be described according to its location of the tooth, rate of and extent of the lesion, in whichever way you wish to. Primary caries lesion may also be described as forward, backward and residual caries. That means all the names of caries that I had taken, they were all primary caries lesions. And in opposition to it, what do we have? We have secondary caries. Now this is the caries lesion which begins at the restoration tooth junction. That means it is present beneath the restoration or around the restoration. So it is called as secondary caries. I hope you follow the difference between the two. I will show you the picture. Now primary caries, I said original caries. So any original caries lesion present in the mouth, that is primary caries. Now secondary caries, now you can see it here, that this picture, the, caries, the first picture, the caries lesion is present here. 
this is the restoration and it is you can see this line below this restoration now here this is a broken filling so half of it is broken and you can see below there is carious lesion present so these are all secondary caries now next classification is based on the location of the carious lesion so as the name suggests we can have pit and fissure caries here these are pits of the teeth and the fissures so we have carious lesion present here these are the pit and fissure caries then smooth surfaces caries now these proximal surfaces they are called as smooth surfaces so caries on this surface will be the smooth surface carie now this is the root surface so caries on the root surface will be root surface caries pit and fissure caries it is the caries occurring in the pits and the fissures of the teeth now this caries begins at the bottom of the pits and along the side walls of the fissures it spreads vertically along the enamel walls till it reaches the dentino enamel junction and what happens here from there it starts spreading laterally and then moves along the dentinal tubules towards the pulp so if we have a pit this is a tooth surface and this is the pit so your pit and fissure caries will start here at the bottom of the pit and along the side walls right from here it moves it will move vertically along the enamel this is the enamel and it reaches the dentino enamel junction which is this here it starts spreading laterally and then it moves vertically downwards along the dentinal tubules to reach the pulp this is the pulp here so this is our enamel this is the dej and this is the pulp i hope you can follow this the smooth surface caries they begin on the smooth enamel surfaces which have been plaque covered for long due to improper cleaning it is not seen in the pits and fissures and it's mostly present on the proximal surfaces like here these are the proximal surfaces and just one second these are the proximal surfaces the side ones and you can see the carious lesion here these are the smooth surface caries radiographically you can see it here there's a proper carious lesion like this happening on the proximal surface and these are the smooth surface caries now root caries as the name suggests these are the caries found on the root surfaces which have been exposed to the oral environment due to gingival recession now you can see it here in this x ray now you can see that how much bone loss has occurred here so this root is completely exposed to the oral environment now if this root was plaque covered then through this cemental outer layer of the cementum the caries it will spread rapidly along the dentine to reach the pulp here from here it moves forwards to reach the pulp so these are the root caries now based on the extent of carious lesion we have incipient caries reversible caries or initial caries also known as white spot it is the first evidence of caries activity on the tooth enamel in the affected area is hard and smooth it appears opaque when it is air dried and it seems to disappear if wetted so that means if you dry the tooth surface you will get a small opaque a whitish patch supposing you get that that means it is an initial stage of demineralization now this patch will disappear if it, the tooth gets covered with saliva or water so this gives the indication that it is a area of incipient caries it marks the stage of initial demineralization of enamel and it can be reversed so second part is cavitated or non reversible caries cavitated caries represents a large lesion in which the enamel has been broken and caries has extended onto the dentine you can see it very clearly here large cavitated region enamel is broken caries has proceeded to the dentine now based on the rate of progression of caries we have acute caries and chronic caries 
coming first to acute caries. Acute caries is referred to as rapidly spreading caries affecting multiple teeth at the same time. You can see it here. Multiple teeth are affected. Also, the lesions are soft, whitish yellow in color and are infectious. Now, why is that they are light in color? The light color is basically because of less time for extrinsic pigmentation or staining to occur. And the example for acute caries is rampant caries, adolescent caries and nursing bottle caries. They are the type of acute caries. We will be doing them under a different heading. So you can see that you have soft white lesions here, yellowish in color. That's because extra time for pigmentation was not there. They are rapidly spreading and they are soft. So the time to get hardened also is not there. Now, in contrast, we have chronic caries, also called as arrested caries or slow caries. Now, chronic caries is a slowly progressing caries lesion. Now, because it's occurring slowly, so therefore there are alternating phases of remineralization and demineralization. This slow progression results in staining from the external pigmentation. Therefore, because staining has occurred, so the lesions are dark brown to black in color and since it's occurring slowly with remineralization also taking place so therefore they are hard sometimes they are called arrested dentine arrested dentine lesion is an open cavitated lesion allowing cleansing of a toothbrush it is dark hard and this dentine is termed as abernated or sclerotic dentine you can see it here it's a perfect example for a rested caries lesion. The lesion is can be cleaned easily with a, uh, with a toothbrush. It is hard, it is brownish in color and it is not sensitive. Now based on the pathway of the spread of the caries lesion, we have forward caries and backward caries. Now what are forward caries? When the carious cone in the enamel is larger or of the same size than that in dentine, it is termed as forward caries. You can see it here. This is the enamel. This is the carious cone. This is the region of enamel. Now this carious cone is larger than that in dentine. So since it's larger than that in dentine, we call it as forward caries. That means the lesion in enamel is bigger than that in dentine. Now coming to the backward caries, when the caries spreading along the dentino enamel junction exceeds the caries in the adjacent overlying enamel, the caries from the TEJ starts extending back into the enamel. Such a lesion is referred to as backward caries. Now you must understand carefully. See, it means when the caries spreading along the dentino enamel junction, that means here, it becomes more then the caries present here in the enamel, what happens is this caries, it starts moving back into the enamel. That means caries from the TEJ starts infecting the enamel. Now this region is known, this lesion is known as backward caries. Now next is based on the extent of removal of caries. It is called as residual caries. It is defined as the remaining caries present after the completion of cavity preparation. You can see it here. This is cavity preparation and this portion, this darkened area, it is the caries which is left under the cavity preparation. Now its occurrence can be of under two circumstances. It may be intentional or accidental. In this case, you can see it appears to be accidental. Why so? Because intentionally it is left only in the conditions when the affected dentine is very close to the pulp and going any deeper may lead to pulp exposure. Now in this case here in the diagram, there is a lot of distance between the base of the cavity and the pulp horn. So here it is accidentally left and such a caries is known as residual caries. Next classification is based on the number of involved tooth surfaces. We have simple caries, compound caries and complex caries. Simple caries, 
as the name suggests is really simple k is involving only one tooth surface so now this is the occlusal surface and you can see k is present only on the one tooth surface this is a picture of a typhodont tooth so i thought i'll explain it that way on a typhodont compound caries caries involving two tooth surfaces you can see the occlusal surface is involved and the proximal surface is involved here in this tooth also occlusal surface is involved and the proximal surface is involved so this is compound caries complex caries caries involving three or more tooth surfaces here you can see occlusal surface is involved the proximal surface that is the mesial surface here is involved and then the lingual surface is involved so we have three surfaces involved it is known as complex caries then based on the age of the patient we have nursing bottle caries adolescent caries or senile caries nursing bottle caries now i had told you earlier that it is a type of acute caries in this type of acute caries it is seen in bottle fed infants it is characterized by early involvement of the maxillary incisors you can see it in the adjacent photograph with unaffected mandibular incisors due to the protection of the tongue now in this picture the mandibular incisors are getting affected also it is typically shows a picture of white or dark brown bands of caries around the neck of incisors they can even cause fracture of teeth rampant caries also a type of acute caries they are suddenly appearing rapidly spreading burrowing type of caries also and it results in the early involvement of the pulp now adolescent caries it is a rampant caries affecting the adolescents who have high carogenic diet and poor oral hygiene you can see it here how badly it has affected the teeth and almost all of them are affected the anteriors and the lowers are also getting affected radiation caries it is a type of tooth decay induced by a dry mouth due to reduction in the salivary flow now this occurs because of the damage of the salivary glands as a result of radiation therapy during treatment of malignant tumors it mostly affects the cervical margins of the teeth incisal edges and the cusp tips i hope you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe to this channel Also check out the videos on tooth nomenclature and occlusion thank you